Hello and welcome to the Blood Red Morning Bulletin. My name's Andrew Beasley and I'm joined by my colleague Emmett Gates to talk about all the latest news from a Liverpool perspective. Um, with the World Cup just a few days away, obviously focus is starting to shift towards that. And um, Stephen Gerrard has backed Jude Bellingham ahead of uh, the World Cup. He's obviously been linked with a move to Liverpool. I don't think that's news to anybody. Um, but how important a role do you think he's going to play at the World Cup, Emmett? I mean, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, I mean, obviously, George Southgate has his favourites, shall we say. Um, mm -hmm. And we saw that in some of the, the choices that he did make, particularly in defence, you know, for the, for his squad selection. Yeah. Um, and he clearly has his favourites in midfield. So, the likes of Declan Rice. Um, but, I mean, I think just going on how good Jude Bellingham has been this season for Bushy Dortmund and how good he was last season... He might be, you know, impossible to ignore. Um, and he may have no other choice than to include him in the starting lineup. But then again, as I said, Southgate does have his favourites. So it's, it'd be interesting to see how much playing time Bellingham actually does get in guitar. But I mean, you, you would think that even if he doesn't start per se, he'd be one of, you know, the first choice options off the bench, you know, from midfield, from the midfielders. So... Yeah, I mean, it's it'll be an interesting one to see how much playing time he actually gets. Yeah, I was looking at uh, his record, his international record at the Euros last year. He only made three substitute appearances, but obviously he, he only turned 18 during the tournament, sort of still very young um, during the Euros, even though it was only a year ago. But if you look at the Nations League, the more recent games, he did start five of the six games. So um, that obviously points towards him starting. I guess a lot of it might come down to which um, formation England play. Um, Southgate tends to use a back four when he thinks his team is going to dominate and a back three when they doesn't, when they when he thinks they won't against the, the sort of tougher teams. Presumably that may play into how often um, Bellingham features. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if, if, if Southgate shifts to 3-5-2, you obviously have three midfield, centre midfielders in that five. So that's where Bellingham could maybe slot in. Um, obviously, if he goes four four two, it's a little bit more tricky because you only have two central spots. Um, but as you said, you know, obviously at the Euros he didn't really play a whole lot. But as you said, he was just he just turned eighteen, and since then he's really you know kicked on a lot, and he's obviously developed into a much better player. So it, it could be a case of it. It's he's you know impossible to ignore really from from you know to play him in the start. But then again, Southgate does his favourite. So it'd be interesting to see if he kind of stays loyal to the old guard that kind of got him, you know, to guitar. And it's then that, you know, we all know that the Nations League, some nations take it seriously. Some others think of it as a, an experimental tournament or, or maybe like a hybrid of first teamers and fringe players or players on the periphery. Um, so I don't know if we should read too much into him, about him you know, playing from the first minute in the Nations League. But I think, yeah, I think the club form for Borussia Dortmund is almost impossible to ignore now at this point. And I would be shocked if he doesn't at least start at least two of the three group stage games. Yeah, it's um, you're spot on when you say about Southgate having his favourites because obviously, you know, Calvin Phillips has barely played. Um, Jordan Henderson certainly hasn't had a great season. I think Declan Rice will probably start, but, you know, bits and bobs I've seen, he hasn't been as good as, as last year either. So you'd have to think that Bellingham is sort of like the form player in there. I mean, there's an opportunity for him to really sort of make a mark and cement his place in the team, both the World Cup and beyond. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, Southgate himself said that the reason that he left Tammy Abraham out um, for his strikers is that, you know, he says form is crucial going into a tournament and Tammy Abraham wasn't in the best form and he, and he hasn't been for Roma. Uh, so going on by that logic, Jude Bellingham should be starting because he's uh, arguably, you know, England's most informed midfielder at the moment. So it'd be interesting to see if, if Southgate kind of goes back on his word or, you know, he kind of selectively chooses, you know, when to bring out the, the form card, so to speak. You know, if he, if he doesn't blend Bellingham, you have to wonder <laughs> what does he have to do to actually get a start. If, as as you say, Rice isn't isn't in the form he was maybe last season, and Calvin Phillips has already played for Man City, so 
I mean, surely it's there for the taking, you know, a starting position, but with Zevki, you never really know. Yeah, exactly. I think it's uh, it will be interesting to see, but I don't think we could take anything for granted. Uh, we've had one comment in the chat box saying, are we getting him? Um, I'm afraid I don't know if we're getting Jude Bellingham, but uh, that's obviously going to run and run. And if he has a if he has a good World Cup, that will only sort of push up the price, you would think. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, with all this talk now of, you know, a possible FSG sale and how that plays into things, when does that, you know, get finalised? And But in saying that, I did read yesterday that Jurgen Klopp has been assured that any potential takeover wouldn't interfere with the January or <laughs> summer market. So maybe it is yeah. kind of full steam ahead for Bellingham. But as you say, if he has a really good World Cup, that price tag just goes up and up and up. And it may actually be out of Liverpool's hands. If he plays, you know, if he starts and he, you know, produces a very good tournament, Liverpool might find it difficult to raise the cash. Yeah, we better hope that uh, Gareth he does. Southgate, <laughs> yeah, well, Gareth Southgate does what he normally does and, and doesn't pick the best players. That would probably do us a favour, wouldn't it? He doesn't give him a single minute. He just doesn't play him at all. <laughs> yeah, Stephen Gerrard might be disappointed, but I think I'd secretly be quite pleased. Um, <laughs> you mentioned about the takeover there. Um, another name has um, emerged as a as a possible bidder for for Liverpool. Um, I saw the name Harris Blitzer, and I thought, I wonder who that is. As if it was one person. It turns out it's not. It's Josh Harris and David Blitzer, which I was completely unaware of. Um, somewhat like FSG, they have their fingers in various sort of um, pies in America. Um, part owners of the Philadelphia 76ers, New Jersey Devils. Delaware Blue Coats and Utica Comets, who I'm sure we all know lots about. You have to give them credit. They're, they're some glorious names. They certainly have the names covered. Yeah. More <laughs> more pertinently for us, I suppose they, they 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 do hold a part stake in Crystal Palace, which I believe they would have to relinquish if they were to buy um, Liverpool. But uh, do you know any more about them than the nothing that I know about them, or or do you think is there any any sort of likelihood of this coming through? Do you think? Yeah, I just um, I did a piece last week for Liverpool.com and kind of looked at the various you know potential owners of the club, and I just know that they're an entertainment group, and they, as you said, they've lots of different fingers and lots of different pies. They own eighteen percent of Crystal Palace, which would have to go because there would obviously be a conflict of interest. Um, so they buy Liverpool, and they own you know you said the Philadelphia Seventy Sixers and other various sports franchises in America. Um I think their net worth is was it ten billion dollars plus maybe. I can't yeah. remember the figure off the top of my head, but they, they are wealthy. Um but again at this point we're all it is just all speculation. You know, you know, this time next week they could be out of the running or two weeks down the line. But I really don't know a whole lot about them. But when you consider the other potential owners, you know the Continuing with the American, the, the the string of American owners that Liverpool have had, maybe not may not be the the worst option, um. But I don't really know a whole lot about them, to be honest. I just know they're an entertainment group, and as you already said, they own lots of different, they've lots of fingers and lots of different pies, um, sports and non sports. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately, you know. Whoever buys Liverpool next, whoever it is, isn't going to sort of satisfy the entire fan base. That's impossible. But I mean, for me, somebody who has something of a background in sports and isn't a nation state would uh, please me a lot more than the many of the other options, at least. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you get certain parts of the fan base that almost want Liverpool to become like a Man City or PSG and just spend money like it's water mm -hmm. um, and not really worry about the moral, you know, questions that go into this this type of takeover but then you know on the other hand the Amer you know another american takeover in a way your conscience is is clear but they run things like a business and they're not just going to sink money in the liverpool and not think twice about it they're going to run it like it has been run under fsg so a continuation of that is arguably probably the best solution i i think from you know from a liverpool fan base perspective but certain fans obviously just want you know the same killing Mbappe for 400 million and same Neymar and same Jude Bellingham and you know as if it's football manager but that's not the way the world works 
Um, so it'll be interesting to see if if they actually, you know, this the Harris Blitzer Entertainment Group actually press ahead and make a bid, formal bid for the club, or is it just maybe speculation and they'll just fade away after a week or two? Yeah, I think there's um, it seems to be new names uh, coming forward, sort of every day, linked with 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 the club. I mean, it's sort of similar to the transfer rumor mill. You never know how much of them, how much of it is truth, and how much of it is just sort of wild speculation. Um, we've had a few more comments uh, coming in, not all positive about them. Um, it won't be long before we are called the Liverpool Redbirds. Uh, is one suggestion. Um, I'm not sure that's going to happen. Um, hopefully not, obviously, but. Um, we will have to wait and see. I think it's the sort of thing where something could move very quickly or I think more likely this could could drag on for months and months. Who knows? Because I don't think FSG are just going to sell for the sake of it. I think they're going to want to get ob- obviously the best deal they possibly can. So, um, yeah, yeah there, there'll be more, more news on this. I don't think, from what I've read, FSG also aren't in any rush to sell and they'll do it when the time is right. It's not like a fire sale where they're trying to get whatever values left for Liverpool. Liverpool's in a very strong position, you know, in terms of valuation wise. So yeah, I, this isn't going to be done before Christmas. It might not even be done before next summer. I think it'll quietly go on in the background, um, interesting parties and whatnot. So yeah, I don't think this is going to be wrapped up anytime soon. No, we will obviously watch with interest, but yes, I agree. I think it could be a while before, uh, before anything concrete sort of happens on that. That will do us for today. Obviously, we'll have um, plenty of content coming up through the day on liverpool.com. And as the World Cup gets closer, obviously, we'll all be keeping an eye on Jude Bellingham. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be back with another video uh, tomorrow morning.